from multi-level stack interchanges that soar into the skies to bewildering roundabouts with their own ecosystems of underpasses and overpasses. Today's video is on the 15 most complex intersections in the world. Let's start with number 15, the Nanpu Bridge Interchange. So, the Nanpu Bridge is one of Shanghai's central pieces of infrastructure. And while impressive in its own right, the interchange to get on and off of it is even crazier. Consisting of several circles and routes, they converge into a growing circular tower of cars and laneways that is oddly satisfying to look at. Number 14, Mescal Square. Of all the intersections on this list, Mescal Square is easily one of the most chaotic. That's because despite being located near the center of the Ethiopian capital of Addis Ababa, it's governed by no streetlights or road markings. Rather, it's a complicated free-for-all where cars, buses, and pedestrians just converge. Strangely enough, despite the lack of markings, the vast majority of vehicles and people get through in one piece, thankfully. Number 13, the Gravelly Hill Interchange. So this one is better known as Spaghetti Junction. The Gravelly Hill Interchange is located in the great English city of Birmingham. It was opened in 1972, and it's famous for consisting of a weaving heap of roadways that look a lot like spaghetti. All of this road is held up by nearly 600 concrete columns, and at the cost of the modern equivalent, about $93 million to build. And while there have been some concerns about structural defects, all in all, it is believed to be safe to drive on, which is nice. Number 11, Katipara Junction. Located in Chennai, India, the Katipara Junction is one of the world's largest cloverleaf junctions. It was opened in 2008. It includes both a road and a metro route, and while grand, it is far from efficient. After all, its large 270-degree ramps not only waste a lot of space, but can make it easy for large trucks to tip in bad conditions. The large amount of merging and weaving involved also increases the risk of accidents while creating traffic as drivers contend with oncoming traffic. And while the relatively cheap build cost is definitely a positive, there are certainly better ways to go about building a highway interchange. Look at that. Number 10, Jacksonville's Turbine Interchange. So if you head down to the city of Jacksonville in Florida, then you can drive down one of the most aesthetically pleasing interchanges on the planet. Connecting the State Route 9A and State Route 202, it's also known as a whirlpool interchange due to its lanes swirling in a way that's reminiscent of a rotating mass of water. More specifically, it's a structure that consists of left-turning ramps sweeping around a central interchange, and the end result is kind of beautiful. Now, this unique form of interchange first came about in the mid-20th century as a response to increasing urban traffic congestion. In fact, the first turbine interchange is believed to have been constructed in France in the 1970s. Since then, turbine interchanges have been built in various countries around the world, particularly in densely populated urban areas. Ever since, the design has gone international, and it's easy to see why based on the pros. After all, this interchange promotes efficient traffic flow. This is because the spiral ramps and lack of traffic lights allow traffic to get on and off the highway efficiently while providing good flow. Its flexible design also makes them easy to modify based on needs and preferences of a given location or situation, while their gradual curves and controlled merging and diverging situation reduces the risk of collisions. However, that doesn't mean that this design is perfect. For example, if built too horizontally, they can in fact be an inefficient way to build an interchange. They're also relatively complex and can be expensive to maintain, especially since the structures that support them can wear down. So what are your thoughts? Do you like the turbine interchange or do you prefer some other entries on this list? Let me know down in the comments below. Number nine, the Judge Harry Pragerson interchange. So LA, Los Angeles, it's known for being a bustling city. And given the fact that many of its nearly 4 million people rely on cars, the Judge Harry Pragerson interchange plays an important role. Completed in 1993, the 40-meter tall stack interchange is a monstrosity that connects Interstate 105 with Interstate 110. It got its name from a certain federal judge named Harry Pragerson, who rather fittingly presided over a lawsuit concerning the Interstate 105's construction. More specifically, the lawsuit alleged that there had been violations of various civil right protections and National Environmental Policy Act. And Judge Pragerson ensured that the compliance with the law happened so that the road could ultimately be completed. Now, what makes this interchange impressive is that it's a complete interchange. In other words, motorists entering the interchange on the freeway from all directions have the freedom to exit the interchange in all possible directions. 
Additionally, nearly all the ramps are direct and can be driven at near mainline speeds if not congested, making for a relatively efficient commute so long as a reasonable number of cars are on the road. Now, if that wasn't cool enough, the interchange also facilitates public transit, as it houses the Harbor Freeway Metro Station, which jointly serves the Metro C-Line Light Rail and Harbor Transit Way Bus Corridor. Now, the interchange also stands apart for being a part of popular culture. You see, shortly after the interchange opened, filmmakers accessed it for the 1994 motion picture Speed and created a famous scene where a bus jumps over an unfinished construction gap. While the gap was created with CGI, a 2009 episode of Mythbusters underwent tests to see if such a jump would be feasible. However, it was proven to be impossible. To top all this off, the interchange also is featured in the 2011 movie Samsara, making it a true star of the silver screen. So it is fair to say, this intersection is both one of America's most complicated and one of its most well-known. Number 8. The Esteroy Tunnel so, for those of you who aren't geography buffs, the Faroe Islands are a small territory of Denmark in the Northeast Atlantic. Now, generally speaking, you gotta take a ferry or drive over a bridge to get between them. However, the Esteroy Tunnel is an undersea passageway that's built a bit different than most. That's because it stands apart for being the world's first and only underseas roundabout. Stretching for over 11 kilometers, the tunnel was officially opened to the car traffic at the end of 2020 and links the capital city of Torshavn to both sides of the Skarfjord Fjord. This not only cut the travel time between Torshavn and Runjavik from over an hour to around 16 minutes, but was also an interesting artistic endeavor. You see, at the roundabout center stands a sculpture created by local Faroese artist Trondor Patterson. The sculpture consists of color-changing lights on a central support structure that illuminate a piece of steel that Patterson shaped to represent people participating in a traditional Faroese chain dance. Now, interestingly enough, the statue and path itself even has its own music track. To experience it, riders just gotta tune their radio to 97.0 FM when driving through the tunnel. Now, it's worth mentioning that building this thing wasn't cheap. After all, at a whopping $375 million, it's the largest infrastructure project in the history of the Faroe Islands. As a result, the government had to install a toll system to help pay for it, with this coming in at an eyebrow-raising 10 bucks per pass. However, locals can reduce the cost by buying a seasonal pass. Unfortunately, this hasn't been low enough for many locals. After all, many have decided to continue to take the old 64-minute long route over the new one due to the price, and many are now calling on the government to reduce the toll. There have also been economic impacts, as housing prices on the less busy side of the fjord increased by a whopping 31% between 2019 and 2020 due to the ease of access. To top all this off, this super modern, worldwide first of an intersection is part of a wider effort to make travel easier in the Faroe Islands. That's because while this incredible tunnel was finished in 2020, in 2023, the territory's fourth underwater tunnel was opened, further connecting the area's disparate islands. So therefore, while the Faroe Islands may be remote, they're still very dynamic. Moving on to number seven, the Plow Roundabout. If you're new to the area around the English town of Hemel Hempstead, the Plow Roundabout is probably one of the last places you'd wanna find yourself driving around in. Named after a former pub and better known as the Magic Roundabout in reference to a popular British children's TV show, the Plow Roundabout opened in 1973. Now, it was inspired by the slightly more famous Swindon Magic Roundabout. It was built in a bid to combat local traffic. After all, before its current design, it was a simple roundabout that was plagued with congestion. So, therefore, expanding the roundabout was seen as necessary, and in many ways, it's a more complicated version of its predecessor in Swindon. Now, beyond having an interesting setup, what sets this roundabout apart is it allows cars to travel in both directions. In other words, both clockwise and counterclockwise. Drivers approach the roundabout from any junction along the path and then choose to turn either left or right. From there, they're free to take U-turns as they see fit or instead use any of the mini roundabouts at the junction. As you approach a new roundabout, right of way must be given to those already in the circle. And in many ways, this road can be thought of as six individual roundabouts connected by a two-way road. All right, if you're confused, you're not the only one. After all, when it was first opened, it was so chaotic that police officers had to be stationed at each of the many roundabouts to direct drivers and help them navigate through. To make matters even stranger, the island and river at the roundabout center means that many animals are in the area, and it's not unusual to see ducks and other wildlife as you drive through. Unsurprisingly, all of this has created a mixed response in the realm of public opinion. After all, various polls have ranked it as one of the best and worst roundabouts in England. It's also worth noting that the roundabout has a weird navigational quirk. According to some blog posts, car navs seem to go haywire when they go through the roundabout. 
That's because for some reason or another, navs tend to automatically route cars to a nearby Honda dealership. Therefore, drivers are advised to follow the painted road markings in order to not be led astray. Number 6. The High Five Interchange Well, as the saying goes, everything is bigger in Texas, and the High Five Interchange is an example of this idea incarnate. Located in Dallas, Texas, it holds the distinction of being one of the first five-level stack interchanges. For those of you who are not urban planning aficionados, a stack interchange is essentially a structure that allows two highways to merge into each other using a system of leveled roadways. Now, while these generally require just a four-stack design, that is to say four separate layers of roadway, the High 5 interchange supersizes this design by adding another stack. While this is usually a measure put in to create an HOV lane or a high-occupancy vehicle lane, in the case of the High 5 interchange, this was simply done to allow more cars to be on the road. HOV lanes were only added to the part of the highway later. In fact, outside of Texas, which has many five and even six level stacks, the only stack interchanges with five levels or more can be found in California, Georgia, and China. In any case, the high five interchange is featured in this video because it's not only one of the first five stack interchanges to be built, but also the tallest. Completed in 2005, its height of 37 meters makes it the tallest interchange in the world. For reference, this makes it as tall as a 12-story building, and the entire system includes a grand total of 43 bridges spread across five levels and 710 support tiers. It has been named the High Five in reference to those five flyover ramps that tower over the landscape. But now it's worth mentioning that stack interchanges also seem to be the most efficient way to create an interchange. That's because while they may seem huge, they are ideal because they completely eliminate the problem of weaving. Weaving happens when traffic attempting to leave the roadway at the next junction and traffic attempting to enter from the previous junction intersect with each other. As you could imagine, this makes accidents quite likely. And as a result, stack interchanges are an ideal solution because they completely eliminate that problem. Furthermore, due to the relatively gentle curve of the interchange ramps, they are efficient at dealing with large amounts of traffic from all directions. So, while they may look like a bit of an eyesore at times, stack interchanges are one of the best designed interchange options out there. Number 5. The Magic Roundabout England was one of the first countries to introduce highway interchanges, and as a result, a lot of experimentation took place in the country. And while the city of Swindon may not be the most notable place in the UK, it's gained some recognition for being home to a unique interchange known as the Magic Roundabout. Constructed back in 1972, it was the brainchild of a certain Frank Blackmore. Now, the idea behind it is simple. Rather than offer just one path to get where you have to go, this road offers multiple. It also uses roundabouts, which is quite clever, as they're one of the safest forms of interchange. Now, the Magic Circle is not just one, but seven roundabouts fit into one interchange. There is one large roundabout around the entire intersection, one small one in the middle, and five separate ones at five points in order to give drivers a way to go in different directions. In effect, this system allows drivers to look at which areas of the intersection don't have a lot of traffic and make use of the different roundabouts to efficiently get to their preferred exit. In other words, you simply point your vehicle in the direction you want to go and yield to cars coming your way and then you exit. While this system may sound a bit chaotic, the numbers show that it's both safe and effective. Beyond reducing traffic and giving drivers the agency to change their route if the cars are in their way, roundabouts generally have been found to reduce serious crashes by about 30%, which is pretty good. And in the period between 2012 and 2017, the Swindon Magic Roundabout had just one fatal crash. Now, it is worth mentioning that the roundabout isn't perfect. After all, it took local drivers a while to adapt to this new intersection, and this steep learning curve may make such a roundabout impractical in larger cities. To make matters worse, over the years, several companies and magazines have ranked the Magic Roundabout as one of the worst and scariest in the UK. Critics have also contended that the only reason why this roundabout is safe is because drivers get scared and slow down, making it near impossible for the cars to do any serious damage in the event of a collision. And while these criticisms all may be true, given the fact that the roundabout has likely saved some lives, I'd say that this forced slowdown isn't all that bad. Number 4. Times Square of all the intersections out there, few are quite as chaotic or as famous as the Times Square in New York. Located in the heart of the city, the square has now become a center of tourism, traffic, and commerce. However, it hasn't always been that way. It was a commercial and residential area in the early 1800s and eventually became known as Long Acre Square in a nod to London's Carriage District. It was later renamed Times Square and served as the early site for William H. Vanderbilt's American Horse Exchange. 
In the 1880s and 1890s, it was a less than savory place, being known for a den of illicit activity. It was badly lit and surrounded by shoddy apartments and establishments. However, changes such as the arrival of electricity and the implementation of a rapid transit system brought more people into the area. This increased investment brought in big names like the New York Times, which built a large tower at the intersection and had the square renamed in their honor. Almost immediately afterwards, the new Times Square became the place to go where New Yorkers gathered to celebrate the arrival of the new year. And in 1907, the New York Times began lowering a huge glass ball down its flagpole at midnight on New Year's Eve to mark the occasion. In the 1920s, large neon signs began to appear, ushering in what seemed to be a new era of glitz and glamour. However, the Great Depression and war brought about hard times to the area, and by the 1960s and 70s, the square had become a site for sleazy adult entertainment, prostitution, and crime. Thankfully, the late 1990s brought in a new wave of investment, and now the square shines so bright with a light that astronauts can see it from outer space. Beyond just being flashy, though, Times Square also serves as an important intersection. At the junction of Broadway, 7th Avenue, and 42nd Street, it used to facilitate thousands of cars per day. However, in 2009, the decision was made to turn most of it into a pedestrian plaza. While businesses had mixed reactions at first, this move ended up being a success. And today, a whopping 330,000 people pass through Times Square daily. And while it still is technically possible to drive through parts of it, given the crazy 20-minute travel time to drive through, it's often best simply to walk through and enjoy that craziness. Number 3. Origami Intersections while not complex in a typical way, the four origami intersections located in Santa Monica, California are an atypical in an artistic way and may just be the only pieces of origami that are potentially visible from space. In essence, these intersections have giant origami crease patterns. Now, these are the work of Robert Lang, who's an American mathematician, physicist, and above all, origami master. In 1999, he was commissioned to create works of public art for the city of Santa Monica, California, and in consultation with Brailsford Studio, designed bronze origami sculptures based on animals. In this project's case, a tree frog, sea urchin, a dragonfly, and a garibaldi, which is an orange fish. Now, to make them, Lang created actual paper origamis that were then coated in wax and then covered in a ceramic shell. The process destroyed the original paper, melted the wax, and left a mold for the molten bronze. Once complete, the sculptures were then affixed to drinking fountains at four intersections. Now, while they're pretty cool in their own right, a real interesting bit was that in the middle of these intersections, giant representations of the crease patterns required to fold each animal were carved into the roadways. More specifically, colored concrete was poured in large squares and the patterns were carved into it. The light-colored concrete squares are visible in the middle of the intersection on Google Earth, and Lang believes that with a good enough camera, these crease patterns may be even visible from outer space. However, it's worth mentioning that not everything was bright and rosy about these statues. That's because about a year after they were completed, the sea urchin and Garibaldi fountain sculptures were replaced with a sea turtle and a flying fish. This is because the original sculptures had featured sharp points right next to where people put their faces to take a drink of water. As a result, they needed to be replaced, although the markings in the street do remain the same. For Lang, the installations were a rare opportunity to bring his origami into a public space. Also, unlike paper, his statues can be interacted with without being torn apart. According to Lang, quote, The thing that was exciting to me about this was here was a way of making it not fragile. Here it is great. They're out there. People can touch it, can handle it much more intimately than they would if it was behind glass, end quote. However, he did have one twinge of regret, and you see, while these artistic intersections are pretty cool, Lang had to come to realize that because these crease patterns are driven over by thousands of cars, it's difficult for many people to enjoy them. Yet, despite this bit of small regret, in all, I think it's fair to say that this unique urban design was a success. Number 2. Shibuya Crossing Oh yes, Shibuya Crossing. Of all the intersections out there, this one takes the cake for being the busiest of them all. Located in front of the Shibuya Station in Tokyo, Japan, it's famous for its traffic system. Once the walk symbol flashes, all cars are put to a halt while people cross from all sides. This pedestrian scramble accommodates between 1,000 and 3,000 people at any one traffic stop, and it's believed that somewhere between a quarter million to half million people walk across it on any given day. What's incredible about it is it's so busy that there's almost no loss of foot traffic at midnight or in the early morning. Now, this is largely thanks to Tokyo's nightlife. After all, alcohol can be sold 24-7 there, and because nearby Shibuya Station has many subway and bus lines to the rest of the city, it is popular to go for a night of dancing, drinking, karaoke, and or dining, and then travel across the Shibuya Crossing to catch the last train home. 
But beyond being busy, the crossing also has an interesting history. You see, back in 1885, nearby Shibuya Station began operations as a stop on the Shinagawa Line. It has been expanded to include eight different lines, and this centrality has convinced many important businesses to open offices and shops around there. Over the years, it's therefore become heavily commercialized. After all, three large video screens mounted on nearby buildings overlook the crossing, as well as many static advertising signs. Interestingly, the Starbucks store overlooking it is one of the busiest in the world. Given the area's heavy traffic and amount of advertising, it's been compared to Times Square in New York. And if you'd like to see all this from a cool vantage point, I suggest heading down to the Shibuya Scramble Square Tower. It's located above Shibuya Station and offers a bird's eye view of the famous crossing from a viewing area that's 230 meters above street level. It's also worth mentioning that the area has an interesting piece of lore connected to it. That's because Exit 8 of Shibuya Station is known as the Hachiko Exit. This is because in the 1920s, a dog by the name of Hachiko would wait at Shibuya Station until his owner, a certain Professor Ueno, would come home from work. This continued for nearly one year until one day the professor didn't return. It turns out that he suffered a brain hemorrhage at work and passed away suddenly without saying goodbye. Despite this, for the next nine years, Hachiko would wait for his owner in the same spot at the same time each day. When his story was reported by one of the professor's former students, Hachiko went down in history. In 1934, a statue was erected in his honor, and ever since, he's been fondly remembered by the people of Tokyo. Good old Hachiko. Good boy. Number 1. The Arc de Triomphe No visit to Paris is complete without visiting the Arc de Triomphe. Located at the western end of Paris's Champs-Élysées, the Arc was commissioned in 1806 after Napoleon's victory at Austerlitz and was completed under the reign of King Louis-Philippe in 1836. Now, as the name suggests, it was built to celebrate the triumphs of the French, more specifically, the French military. The monument is adorned with the names of 660 people, with most being French generals and marshals. It's also home to the Tomb of the Unknown Soldier, and for those who appreciate a view, a stunning panoramic overlook. This view not only allows you to see practically every corner of the city, but also enables you to fully appreciate the grandeur of the intersection below it. In fact, by many accounts, the viewing experience is better than that of the Eiffel Tower. Now, beyond its physical features, it's also got a lot of symbolic value. After all, important French figures such as Napoleon, Victor Hugo, and Ferdinand Falk have passed under the Arc during their funeral processions. Now, unsurprisingly, this important monument has become a main artery of the city, and the intersection that's been formed there is pretty crazy. You see, the intersection used to be called the Place de l'Etoile, with Etoile meaning star in French. Now, this is because the juncture is formed by using 12 radiating avenues, creating a massive intersection that connects many areas of the city. It's also worth noting that it wasn't always the case. At the time of its construction, the Arc de Triomphe did not look as grand as it does today, because its surroundings were far less airy and ornate. However, when a certain Baron Houseman conducted major urban renovations in the city, he wanted the crossroads of the 8th, 16th, and 17th arrondissement to be expanded. By clearing up space around the monument, demolishing and rebuilding old surrounding buildings, and both widening and straightening 12 avenues radiating out from the Arc, he was able to make the star-shaped plaza far more visually striking, while also improving circulation. Now, despite these improvements, the reality is, is that it is beautiful, yet relatively scary place to drive on. After all, despite being well-designed, the intersection was made for horse and carriages, not cars, making it necessary for traffic police to control the flow of traffic here at all times. In fact, it's even been reported that if there's an accident here, each driver is considered equally at fault. This is because these conditions here are so crazy that this is the only place in Paris where accidents are not judged. And as a result, no matter what the circumstances, insurance companies split the cost 50-50. That's pretty nice. In any case, despite the chaos, what is clear is that whether you're zipping around the circle in a car or enjoying the grandeur of the moment as a pedestrian below, the Arc de Triomphe and its surrounding intersection is one of Paris's coolest tourist attractions. Thanks for watching, guys. I'll see you next time. Thank you to our channel members.